What is going on? Quick video. So I got you on the Boya by M1 lavalier microphone just to test it out, listen to it, watch the videos, see if I like the sound versus the internal mic on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Let's see, not a lot of content today. I didn't really do anything, just went to work. I was thinking about making another video on my hair clippers and trimmers since I got that new uh, overhead setup that I have with a GoPro. And I, I watched a couple of the videos, works out pretty good. I had made one originally, but it was a mess. Said the wrong words. I was using a tripod before I got this taller tripod I'm using now and it wasn't high enough bad angles so I just I uploaded it but I just made it private just using it as a tool practice learning experience because it wasn't that great of a video so I was gonna do that today but I had a had a headache after work so I just took a nap but what did I do today? So I ordered two more light bulbs. This is the 75 watt dimmable one that I got was last week to try out. I actually got the box right here. Let's put that right there. So it's the GE Refresh Energetic Daylight. 75 watts, like I said earlier. It says it's a is an HD light, so I picked these up because they're dimmable. So I got um, two right now on the splitter. I'm only using a a key light right now. So if I use a key and a fill, then I can dim the light. I only have one dimmer, but I'm looking around for for another one so uh, I can adjust each light accordingly. Those things, the Lutron ones, they're about $12 at Lowe's and Amazon, so they're not hard to find. I'm just trying to see if I have an extra one somewhere. So I picked those up after work. Target drive up, gotta love it. Also picked up some some uh, morning snackies, uh, which is the chewy granola bars. Quick and easy, throw them in your pocket. You don't gotta worry about heating it up, which is great where I work at because sometimes a microwave is not always readily accessible. Oh, and I almost forgot. The highlight of my day today was wrong way driver on the freeway. So I was heading up 101 by South San Francisco by Candlestick Point, which was where Candlestick Park used to be. That's the Hunter's Point area. And that area of the freeway is pretty cool because it's it's level or uh, what do I say, at sea level. So you see the water. So I'm driving up that freeway into number one lane as usual, and all of a sudden I see I see headlights, and that's that's normal on the freeway to see headlights coming at you if you're at a curve, because you can see the oncoming cars as the road's turning, but this looked different. Like it was literally in my lane. So what I do, of course, I check my right side, check my left side, switch lanes, flash my high beams at the person just to, just to let them know, like, hey, don't change lanes. I already moved. And just pass me just like nothing, just like we're on a two-lane road. But it was, a, it was a freeway, and we were going north, and he was going south. So that was kind of a, an adrenaline rush right there. So right after that, I, I called a California Highway Patrol told them about it. It seemed like the dispatcher had already known or there had been already have been reports of it because she asked me if it was a what would she say a silver Kia or something but at that point I couldn't tell what it was it just happened so fast she asked me if I had the if I got a plate I'm like no there's no way I could have got a plate off that car yeah so good thing I got my Rove dash cam so I was able to play back the, the footage of that. When I looked at it, I didn't realize that the vehicle flashed me with their high beams. After I flashed them, like I was going the wrong way, but 
I wasn't. It was that person. So yeah, I couldn't really tell, but it looked like it was a SUV, lighter color SUV. I had told a dispatcher it was bigger than a, a sedan, maybe a, um, a crossover. So I was kind of right for it happening so fast because I was going about, I slowed down about 50 just to give myself some time to, to maneuver if needed. And I think that car must have been going around 50, 50 to 65. So it was a trip this morning. I made it out alive in one piece. So I'll, I'll attach that video. I saved it on my, on my phone or I uploaded it to the computer, switched it over to the phone and put it on Instagram. So I do have a copy. So I'll attach that at the end of this video. Yes, I'll touch on, on that video about the, the cedar trees. So that video was taken and I have an older GoPro, it's a three plus. So there's no stabilization options on the, on the GoPro itself. So I try to not walk around or move too much with the GoPro because it, it's just too shaky. So I tried a post editing software for, to remove the shakiness or stabilize it. Emulsio, you can find it on the app store. It's a free app. It kind of works. It does take out the shakiness, but then when you look at it, it kind of does that weird, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like a waviness in the video. So I tried doing the edit of it for the whole video clip, and that just made the whole video clip weird. So I uh, got the clips back, broke it down, re-edited it, re-edited it, and just uh, used it on the clips that I really needed it. And it's okay, it was better, but like I said, it does that weird waviness into the video. So I don't know, I don't know how I feel about that. I think I'm just gonna use the GoPro for uh, shots that are on a tripod where there's not a lot of movement. And if I do have to use movement, I watched a couple of videos on techniques of how to hold the camera on like a stick to get a smooth, non-shaky images. Or I'll just use the iPhone 11 Pro Max to do the images when I'm moving around because it has a stabilization built in, I think. Don't quote me on that. So yeah, that's that on the GoPro. Maybe, maybe I'll get a nine, I don't know. Seems cool. I wanna actually see one in, in person and try it out, but I don't, I don't know anybody who has one. Yeah, and uh, let's see, lighting wise, I don't know how I feel about my lighting. Like I have a softbox, which is cool. I like the softbox. It's just kind of weird when I set it up. It doesn't have a lot of travel when you when you put it through. It has a little slot where you put the light stand through. So it's good when it's straight, but when you try to tilt it, 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 it hinders it. So that one's cool for straight, straight non-severe angle or not severe angle, I don't know. For shots or lighting, which doesn't require to be super angled. So it works. Right now I'm using the umbrella with the silver black, silver on the inside, black on the outside. I kind of like this one, but it seems a little bright. I do have the white shoot through one, which might be a little bit better. I'll use it on a, another video and, and do a comparison. But the good thing about the umbrellas are the, the crown in the eye, whatever they call that light that shows up right here, it's circle on the soft box is a square because I have a square soft box. So yeah, I'll still have to decide which, uh, which lighting I like better or which uh, method, but at least I have lights, which is so much better from when I started trying or attempting to make videos. It was, it was terrible. So it's, it's progress, work in progress. So that's all I got. If anything, I'll attach it or I'll, I'll bring it up on a, on a future video. So cool. I'll cut it here and catch on the next one.